This might be one of the greatest visuals of my entire life. <laughs> you got dad, kids, chocolates for the missus. <laughs> the world's strongest man is a moniker that Mark Henry has undeniably earned. But on top of his amazing feats of strength, Mark Henry is not just a decorated WWE superstar, Hall of Famer, and world champion. He's also a mentor. Hey, I got a video of Mark Henry falling down the stairs. <laughs> Coming down into the dungeon. Hey, this is what it was like to go into Stu's dungeon. Mark Henry has had a journey through the world of professional wrestling unlike any other. Starting as a, as a fan of the business that we all love, evolving into a superstar that we will never forget, and becoming somebody that scouts and advises the superstars of tomorrow. Today, he's in the Not Sam studio with yours truly, Sam Roberts, pointing out some of the things that he's finding uh, on the desk in front of us. I bet 90% of the people that come down here don't know who this is. Who? You mean Poochie? Oh, that's Poochie? Oh, damn, hell, I don't know who he is then. Well, who'd you think it was? I thought it was the uh, Hong Kong food, the number one super guy. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, that was that's Poochie. Well, here he is. In the Not Sam studio, who else could it be but the world's strongest man and the number one Hong Kong Fui fan this side of anywhere? Mark Henry's here. Yeah. Mark Henry. Yeah. yeah. At long last in the Not Sam studio. How are you, man? man I'm, I'm I'm impressed. Are I'm, you? I'm very impressed. That feels good. This is this is a collection. That I feel like I, you're being polite. I'm being polite. <laughs> Mama told me if you don't have nothing good to say. <laughs> yeah. Don't say nothing at all. But I don't have that option because I got a microphone in front of me. You got to say something. Got to say something. Well, Mark, uh, I'm glad that you're here. And I want to tell you, and I, I hope this makes you feel good, because uh, you've always been so good to me um, that I would think that my family appreciates that. And I told my wife, uh, Mark Henry's going to come over. And she goes, to the podcast? I said, yeah. She goes, I don't trust him. <laughs> Yes. I was like, I don't trust. My reputation <laughs> precedes me. She, did she tell you don't turn your back on me? She said, I swear to you. She said, I don't trust. I said, how could you not trust him? She said, after that thing with the pink jacket. <laughs> <laughs> she was mad and still mad that you made her feel feelings. And then you squashed and those I things. took them away. You squandered them. You made it so she th thought twice about ever feeling. Again. He, yeah, because she was lied to. She said he lied. <laughs> he, he lied. I, I, he talked about, I'm coming home. Daddy's coming home. Coming home. And, and listen, he lied. I, I think one of the best stories that came out of that was uh, Paul White was a big show. Mm -hmm. Because he was at home and um, sitting on the couch with Bess, you know, they watching and he's, you know, crying and just like, dang, I can't believe that it's over. You know, it's, Bess is consoling him, as I understand. <laughs> and then the business happened. <laughs> <laughs> and he proceeded to call me and leave a voicemail. <laughs> Because he knew I was in a, I was in wrestling state. I was working. Mm -hmm. So he's like, hey, you mf -er. <laughs> I can't believe you did that. You didn't tell me. Like, yeah, yeah. And he's like, when I see you, I want to punch you in the teeth. <laughs> You're so mad. <laughs> They're so, so mad. Because you made people feel. Oh, man. And people don't want to feel, especially uh, be that vulnerable. That would be one of those great things. Because you'd imagine, you know, everybody wants to be the first person to text. I want to be the first person to text my 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 feelings. I want to be the first person to text him best wishes. There had to be somebody that at least had the text written. And then just as they realized, no, this is wrestling, had to delete the text. Ah. Nobody. Ah. Uh, Nobody. Ah. Uh, now, I, I don't know how Hulk Hogan got my phone number. <laughs> I, I don't know either. But Hulk Hogan called me and 
left the voicemail. Hey, this is Terry. Get this message. Call me back. And I'm like, Terry. Who in the hell is Terry? I looked at the area code. Said Tampa. I don't. I don't know Terry. <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. he could have said it's Hulk Hogan. I mean, yeah, you would think it's it's Hulk. Call me back. It's Hulk. Yeah, because you don't know him. No, I like, mean, you've I met mean, him, I've but... met him before, but we never had a conversation. Like he probably had to get your number from somebody. He got my number from somebody, and then you had to sit there and do detective work. I had to become. We don't, you don't need Terry's. I in had Tampa. to become monk. <laughs> Tony Shalhoub trying to figure out who's Terry in Tampa. My Jewish brother. <laughs> well, what, what was he calling for? Just to tell you that was good? To tell me that that was the best mic work he had ever saw. Dude, this is what I was hoping. He, I said, mean, that I, I, he said that I've never been got. Whoa. He said nobody never got me before. He said that was the only time in my life where I had hurt feelings that you were done. Wow. And watching you like just pour your heart out, it just it was he said it was it was like really cool. And then it became masterful mm-hmm. once you turned on Cena. And listening to him, it was hard for me. I'm choking up when he was talking to me because I'm talking to Hulk Hogan and he's putting me over. That was what I was going to ask you. I couldn't believe it. Yeah. And and, and to, the, to this day, like that's one of the greatest conversations I've ever had with anybody because not because he was putting me over, mm-hmm. but because he was explaining to me the history of the business and all the stuff that he saw. And he said that, he said, you couldn't see through it. He said, nobody, if anybody, he, his words, if anybody ever tell you that they saw through it, they full of shit. Wow. I, and I believe that. I believe that. Especially because at that point in your career, it was like one of those things where like, you know, you were an established guy. You were Mark Henry. Yeah. you have been around, but you weren't necessarily a main event guy in that moment. You weren't in the title picture in that moment. And all of a sudden, everything turned on a dime. Yeah. And it is one of those things, too, where I feel like, you know, you did so many different things in the WWE that you had to take that moment to remind people, yeah, I have the uh, ability to be very, very dangerous. I know I can be fun, but I can be very dangerous. And that's what happened. In that moment, it was like we all felt the feelings. But then not only were we reminded, yeah, 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 no, I was manipulating you, but the guy manipulating you is also... One of the more dangerous people you could ever meet when he wants to be. When when, when you want to be. Right. And, and it was it was hard for me to be that guy because it bleeds over. Like mm. I don't I don't know if you've ever heard like like uh Jim Carrey mm-hmm. when he played mm-hmm. Andy Kaufman. Like you had to call him Andy. Mm-hmm. Like I, I've seen all the documentaries and the stories about it. Uh you hear the the, the comedy from Dave Chappelle and yeah, you know, great. I wanted to meet Jim Carrey, <laughs> <laughs> but he was Andy, <laughs> and I didn't even, you know, I didn't want to meet Andy, <laughs> you know. It's, yeah, and that's 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 the thing. Like for me to get there, like I was miserable driving. If I was, I already don't like to drive because people don't know how to. You're saying like other drivers on the road. Yes. Yeah. People are horrible drivers. Yeah. Me angry and frustrated and thinking about work, thinking about what I have to do when I get to that town, mm-hmm. wherever America, I would be in my feelings and my thoughts. And man, I had a couple of road rage incidents. And I had to dial it back. I'm like, hey, Mark Henry. Not Mark Henry, the wrestler, mm-hmm. Mark Henry, but hey, you. Person. Do with the family at home. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> stop following these people. 
<laughs> I was losing my mind. Can you imagine honking and honking and you're getting mad at somebody and then you drive past him and you're ready to flip him off and you turn and look and Mark Henry is staring back at you? It's Brother, the worst road rage news ever. I, I was on the brink of running my car into somebody one day. No. I swear to God. You got a lot to lose. Like, But that's the, the, the level of where your headspace gets when you start to believe and you start to get into it. Like I had to talk myself down from the tower a couple of times. Mm -hmm. Like it wasn't cool. Mm -hmm. And I never wanted to do that in the first place. I never wanted to be the the mean heavy. I want, man, like I helped, I mean, I had help inventing sexual chocolate, mm -hmm. but that was more me. I had so much fun. Right, and you like get I to got take to that be with skillful. you. I got to sing and dance and act mm -hmm. and, you know, like not worry about the pressures of carrying the title, mm -hmm. but being a big part of the entertainment value during that era. People are just happy to see you. Right. 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 But then, you know, people like Eddie Guerrero and <laughs> Chris Benoit and, um, Ron Simmons was like, bro, if I was you, I'd be world champion right now. And you go, so I'm, I started to feel like I was wasting it. Interesting, because you had the physical gifts to right. be that guy, but it, because you choose to be the entertainment side of things. Yeah, there's other people that would have died to yeah. get the kind of attention that I... To do the stuff. Did you ever see? You see the thing when when in, uh, I threw the guy off the stage. Yeah, 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 sure, sure. I had people like when I went to the locker room. They was like, "How did y'all do that?" Right. Like, did he did he jump like off a trampoline? Or, or, like, how is? I said, "No, I I threw him," and they were like, "Man, get out of here, man! You didn't throw that. That dude was probably about a hundred like 200, 200 pounds, 230 pounds, somewhere in there. I don't know how much you weigh, but when I say it's time to go, it's time to go. <laughs> yeah. You're the one making the calls here. <laughs> like I told him, I said, uh, he, he asked me how, he's like, how you want to do it? And I was like, I got you. <laughs> you don't have to worry about it. <laughs> like this is, this is not a situation where you're negotiating the term, sir. Right, right. Yeah, they I, told I'm gonna me that, part. that there was a big crash pad back there, uh -huh. and I told them to put a white towel on it so I could see it in the dark. Smart. So they put a couple of towels, and I knew where it was, and I I looked at it. And at one point, I'm holding him, mm -hmm. and I go, I wanted to make sure that I didn't undershoot or overshoot. <laughs> <laughs> so if you go back and look at it, you can see you double take you, it for the towel. Me. You'll see me double take <laughs> it. And, uh, and, and when I, when I like, kind of crouched and lowered my center of gravity, like, he, he, I mean, he jerked up off the ground. Mm -hmm. Like, it was, like, that was one of, my, one of my better pieces of work. I was very proud of that. I'm so glad you could tell the story now because I feel like, like you said, people asking you, well, how'd you do that? Was there a trampoline? Was there this? Like sometimes you watch at home as a fan and you don't realize what you've really seen. Right? There, there it looks was cool. like four times, like four or five times uh, stuff like that happened. Like people were like, how? Right. That was one. Um, when the cage incident where I, it took me like six minutes right with the door to break the chain off the door mm -hmm. we do what we call magic right smoke mirrors mm -hmm. and we have a crew that does that for us and you go and you try and you know the entertainment side of pro wrestling right spectacle he got busy and forgot no Oh, no. To go and take a hacksaw and cut down the pin that holds the master locks together. Now, if anybody should have got paid to do a master lock commercial, 
it should not have been me <laughs> because they say you cannot break them. You just had to- I broke one with my hands. Not with a not with a tire iron. Not with a crowbar. No. A soldering iron with these. So so I mean and the you can rage. go back and look at the video live. Like you go back and look at it and people go, Well, how did it break? Mm-hmm. And I'm like, because I was pulling on it and for like three days I couldn't feel my hands. After. Afterwards. I mean, but the the rage that must have been in you when you realized that I can't do it. That you can't do it because I couldn't do it. But it's not like for you not to be able to do it, it's worse than Anybody else on the roster? Anybody on earth? You're the world's strongest man. Ron Simmons said it best. Don't you ever get mad and hit one of the boys. Because I got angry. I choked some people. Okay. I pushed a couple of people. Mm -hmm. Talked real bad to them. But I never hit nobody. And... I've had a lot of restraint in my life. There were some people that needed to be hit, and I didn't. And Ron came to me after, no, it was before then. Arn Anderson locked all his stuff. You know, we used to go to these shit buildings, Mm -hmm. and Arn Anderson locked his stuff in one of these lock, put it in a lock and closed the door, Mm -hmm. and didn't realize that it didn't have the little thing that you do like this and pull the locker open. Mm Mm-hmm. So it was just shut in there, <laughs> just locked. <laughs> and unbeknownst to me, um, Ron and Ken Shamrock and Steve Regal and uh, they went and got a crowbar from the from the crew, mm-hmm. and they're trying to pry this locker open. So I show up with my bags. I don't even get my pull my bag down yet. And they go, Ron said, there's your crowbar. <laughs> Mark, <laughs> open that locker. <laughs> and with one hand, I grabbed the lip. Oh, my gosh. Pow! And pulled the whole door off. And kept walking. And Ron said, well, I be goddamn. <laughs> Did you see that? Like, And that's one of the things that they still talk about in the locker room. Did I you, ask, you ask some of the boys, they'll be like, yo. The, with one hand, he snatched that thing off of there and broke the whole door off. And that's got to be one of those moments where it's like anybody that didn't know, now, now you, you know. know. <laughs> <laughs> like, and it was, it was, it was stuff like that that you know went around. But is that why Ron said, "Whatever you do, don't hit don't, any of the boys because you're." Yeah, he said you're gonna get mad one day. Mm-hmm. <laughs> He's like, I've been mad. Mm-hmm. He said, "But don't you ever hit nobody mm-hmm. because." He knew that the judgment would be worse than the incident. Sure. Because if I hit somebody and I break a jaw or end their career or kill them, mm-hmm. man, you you almost would be better off killing them and going to jail. Yeah. Than to hurt somebody so bad that you end their career. Right. That's that's what he was trying to tell me. Like, it ain't worth it. Yeah. And Ron protected me a lot, man. He helped me a lot. How do you find that constraint? Like, how do you, how do you develop? Is it something you developed before wrestling? That- yeah, because my mom thought I was going to get killed right. when I was a little boy because mm-hmm. I was so much bigger than other kids. And my my cousin Andrew sent me a picture the other day. I had to, I'm going to show you the same size. Okay, let me see. No. So the three of you are the same age. No, the smaller kid uh-huh. is two years younger than Andrew. So but the kid I'm fifty two, he's fifty two to my left. The one to my right is two years younger than us. Wow. That's the difference in size. I mean it looks just Come on over, hot dog. Hot dog, get a look at this. Get a look at this, hot dog. It's a. it looks like a different like there's almost a generation. It, it looked like I'm eight years older than him. Yeah. Ten years older. Yeah. Cause and it's not just a height thing; it's a full look. Look at my traps and and, oh and rhomboids. You're 11 here. Yes. Sheesh. Like when you have muscle definition, and I was a chunky kid, but I still you had muscle. S- the shoulders are yeah. And 
And it's just, some of it was genetic, but um, that was the first year that I started lifting weights. When you were 11? When I was 11. My brother was 13. Wow. And he, the, my mom really bought the weights for him because he started football. And um, I lifted weights every day for like hours. But you, so you had to learn back then that to, like- To have restraint. To have restraint because- I was so big. It's going to be a problem. Oh, man. My mom used to be like, somebody going to fight you. <laughs> somebody going to stab you in the back. Right. You're going to get shot. Right. So leave people alone. And, you know, and that unfortunately was not the case because I'm really hypersensitive. Mm -hmm. So all the hey, hey, hey is Fat Albert. <laughs> Smack. <laughs> <laughs> I would think it wouldn't last too long, luckily. Oh, man, I, I ended up in juvenile detention school. They wouldn't let me go into Silsby. Really? Yeah. Because you kept Smacking, hitting kids that, that would make kids. fun of you. Yeah. I held a kid hand down and put a magnifying glass on his hand. What? Mark, that was, that I love, the, you know I love that you. That was the final straw. Well, that's some Jeffrey Dahmer stuff. Yeah. That's like not But I was oh, mad because yeah. nobody would do anything. Oh, See, nobody that's, that's what people kids. don't realize mm -hmm. today. Mm -hmm. All of this stuff that happened, and they got all these anti-bullying campaigns. Yes. They didn't have that. Right. You know what I was? What? I was soft. Mm. And so you said, you want you know what's soft? Your hand yeah, under this you, magnifying glass. Stop being a pussy. That's what they said. That's what I used to get told mm -hmm. by adults. Wow. The people that were supposed to be protecting me, mm -hmm. they 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 ain't give me no hope. And see, there's there's kids that's out here killing themselves mm -hmm. because they lose hope. Mm -hmm. And they feel like it's just going to get worse. And then there's kids out here that's killing other kids. Mm -hmm. It's those adults' fault. Mm -hmm. not, not The kid need counseling. Right. The kid need resolution to the problem, and no adult is doing that. So is that why you lean so far into mentorship because as long as yes. i've known you like this is something that like it comes very naturally to you it's your instinct it's kids something love me because they can see through they can see past my size and i look like i look they they, they like wow uh-huh like there's nobody on earth could tell your son mm -hmm. that i'm a bad person no he, he just had five ten minutes with me yeah because I, I looked him in his eyes and he could see that I was actually listening to what he was saying. Right. No, there was it was it was there was a connection. And you I can tell, you know, a lot of people come through here. And you know, a lot of people are friendly, but a lot hey, oh, hey, how's it going? There's it's a different deal. And I think you can also tell with parents, right? Like I can tell, like, oh, this is a family guy. This is somebody who values this when it's like yeah. oh, they're really taking a second to connect with this kid. Yeah, I love it, man. It ain't about money, it ain't about like, hey, look at me. Mm -hmm. None of that type of stuff. Like I do it without nobody watching. Well, that's why I I I talked to you about this. Is is hundreds of wrestlers that are in the places where they are today because I did it. I ain't asked them nothing. Mm -hmm. They have no idea that I was working for them. To this day, you think they don't? Some of them. Wow, it's a lot. The ones that were not in wrestling mm -hmm. are the ones that didn't think. Oh, I'm going to be a wrestler. I'm training to be a wrestler. I'm doing the ones that are the ones that word as I want to be a wrestler. Mm -hmm. Then they might they might know because they'll find out. Sure. But the people like Jay Cargill that was not in wrestling, mm -hmm. Bianca Belair that was not in wrestling, Baron Corbin that was not in wrestling, um, Braun Strowman, uh, people like Apollo Cruz, Rich Swan. Um, Brian Danielson, mm -hmm. they were wrestlers already. They just didn't get recognized for the talent that they had. Right. So I had to say, hey, <laughs> do y'all know who these people are? Because they better than everybody else in the developmental system. Mm -hmm. When did you start? When did you start doing that? Like, when did you? Because also wrestling is a very selfish business historically. Most guys by accident. By accident. Mm -hmm. Oh, you started doing it by accident. Yeah. Yeah. How so? Because Canyon Seaman, who was the head of uh, talent development, mm -hmm. and Gerald Briscoe, mm -hmm. who 
you know, kind of found guys that were in wrestling because he loved wrestling. Mm -hmm. He's like, oh, this guy got an interesting look. This guy's talented. This guy said he wanted to be a pro wrestler. I was hanging out with them one day, and Canyon was my guy. I like Canyon. Mm -hmm. We had a lot of fun together. He was very glib, smart, Stanford guy. Mm -hmm. And I don't look like a smart guy, but I'm... <laughs> I might not be the sharpest knife in the drawer, but I'll cut you. <laughs> yeah, there is a wit. There is a wit about you that I think people don't see coming. Ass. Yeah, ooh, yeah. <laughs> and we we just got off, mm -hmm. and I would tell him, I don't know if that person is cut out for wrestling, hmm. but if you tell them this and this because it's not physical, it's mental for mm -hmm. this person, they. They're shy. They got to get out of the shyness. Mm -hmm. Like, they need exercises that bring them out. Mm. He was like, well, tell them. And I'm like, I don't get paid to do that. <laughs> <laughs> that's y'all job. Yeah. You know, yeah, I mean. That's not me. <laughs> and I just did it for fun, man. And then they started saying, hey, Mark, you, you pretty good at analyzing this. Like, can you come with us to the Olympics? Oh, Can wow. you come with us to this place? Can you come with? So I just started going just for the trip, <laughs> right? Because why not? What else just am I doing? Go hang out with Canyon. I wasn't working at the time, right? They weren't using me, mm -hmm. so I just started doing that. And then um, this Legends thing came along, and then I became got on the Legends deal, mm -hmm. and um, then I was gone. Yeah. So, so what are the things, right? Because. I'm also you. I I keep hearing that from people. The uh, yeah, Mark Henry did this for me. Mark Henry did that for me. And it's a lot of stories that people don't even know. But I think the last one I told you was Samantha Irvin. Oh yeah. Who I didn't know. I saw an American Idol. Or America's Got Talent. America's Got Talent. She tried out to be a wrestler though. No. She went to the wrestler tryout. She said afterwards. Right. Okay. So after tell me. I, I after right, right, right. Her. That's what I mean. After you. Yeah. Yes. And she said, "Mark, I'm not athletic." And but I, so wait, wait. So go to go back. You're watching. I'm watching. You're watching America's Got Talent. Yeah. And you just make. And I said, "Damn, she's talented." And then she started talking back and forth with the um, the judges. Sure. And she was glib. You love glib. I do. <laughs> I like people that when they walk in the room, people go, who is that? Who is that? You know, who is that person right there? You know what I'm talking about? That, that's a wrestler. Yeah. Oh, wow. That person is a wrestler. They just don't know it yet. And I can spot them. I, man, I, I'm I'm batting a thousand. And Bianca Belair just main event at WrestleMania. Yeah, she did. A year ago. So and not only, ago. the thing about Bianca is... She was not even thinking about wrestling. She was a CrossFit girl. And now she's gotten so good that she's at the point where it's like people coming in to the work with Bianca. Is the she's, she's the standard to be judged by, too. Yes, absolutely. Like, hey, um, it took her three years. This is what we want. You, If you p apply yourself like she did, you could be here in three years. Mm -hmm. Yikes. That's a lot of pressure for all these new people coming yeah. in. Yeah, yeah, but that's the level that it's been raised to. And I feel like if you look at, at what they've done, you know, in the last couple of years with NXT, and while the NXT, like the transfer over to 2.0 was rough for people that were fans, when you look at what's happened over the last couple of years. You know, how three of them, I paid my own money to get them. Who? Oh. Braun Strowman. I all, but, all but begged him to quit being a strong man. Really? I said, bro, I, I don't want to come across as a dream smasher. And he was like, no, what do you mean? What do you mean? I said, you you have the unfortunate luck of being in the same era with three guys that could be all-time strongest men of all time. Mm -hmm. Like, you're, you're not going to beat them. Half Thor, Bjornsson, um, Eddie Hall, and during that time, Marjorie Puzanowski was good. And I said, bro, you're not going to beat them. I said, you should wrestle. You got that personality. You know, like, what you got is what we are. 
in wrestling. You 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 ice skating uphill, and he was like, "Man, I'm 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 gonna give it all I got, Mark. I I gotta try to be. I gotta try to do it." I said, "All right, man." I said, "Here's my phone number. If you ever want to do it, hit me up." Two years later, wow, he called and said, "Hey, man, I'll, is this Mark Henry?" Like. I was just seeing if this is still your phone number. I was like, "Yeah, this is me." <laughs> he was like, "You think uh, you think you can still get me into wrestling?" Hell yeah! Where you at? <laughs> That's so I cool. flew in, I flew in with my money. Wow! To Orlando the next week, and you just tell the guys, "Hey, this he, guy's he coming?" Yeah. Wow. And he got down there. And he he's so vagarious and jolly, mm-hmm. he pissed a lot of people off. Ah. Uh. And I told him, I, I went down there for a big man camp that I did. Mm-hmm. And I said, hey, you need to shut up. Everybody here tell me that you're just loud and obnoxious. You got two ears and one mouth for a reason. And he listened. He listened. He turned the tide, and he became a world champion. And I think too, Rich Swan became world champion yeah. in the cruiserweight in division. the cruiserweight. Yeah, Apollo Cruz mm-hmm. became cruiserweight champion, mm-hmm. and then he became. I think he got the Intercontinental. I think he got the U.S. Oh, U.S. Yeah, title. U.S. Yeah. Everybody that I touch. Yeah. When you're did welcome. You, when- <laughs> When did you develop this thing, though, right? Because, I mean, you come in in 96, and you're a fan. You grew up watching wrestling. A mark. Different than a fan. Um, a mark. A I, mark I named cried, Mark. I cried when wrestlers lost that I love. All the way up until 96? I'm not going to admit that. <laughs> but I bet you I got pretty damn pissed when the people I like lost. Who's one that you cried when they lost? JYD. Yeah. Yeah. And I remember um I remember uh Mr. Perfect um him and Ted DiBiase mm-hmm. beat the dog shit out of JYD one time. Mm-hmm. If I could have if I'd have been an older kid, mm-hmm. I would have jumped the barricade <laughs> and I would have went and tried to help him. <laughs> I yeah, mean, it was man. So, so on that note, then, if this is a way, I mean, you're as you're Marky Mark and the Funky Bunch. Like you're a you're a you're a you're a you're a Mark for in, in every sense of the term. <sighs> yeah, Lee, it was, bro. I I told you, like, I went home when I, my my first year. I came back home from college. Yeah, I'm in Colorado yeah. at the Olympic Training Center. I'm telling people, bragging mm-hmm. about the stuff that I had. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, my my wrestling memorabilia. Because there was two other guys that were wrestling fans I found out. And I wanted to show off all my stuff. <laughs> I go home, my mom done, she done gave stuff away, yard sales. No, and what kind of memorabilia are we talking about? I'm talking about stretchums. No. Action figures. No. All of the magazines. Ah. Uh. All my wrestler magazines. Did you cry? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. 19 years old. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean you sold uh, them? <laughs> it's all and, gone. And if I wasn't such a tough guy, I could get emotional about it right now. Just it's thinking still, about it. Bro, it's still tight. I'm still tight about it. So there is part of you that walks into this studio and goes, man, that's cool, but also... How come he, because right before, when you sat down, <laughs> you asked me that D-Generation X foam thing. Were you a fan when you got it? Yeah, I bought it at the shop. I probably bought it at Madison Square Garden or something like that. Yeah. yeah because And then when I told you that my kids found it in my parents' garage because they save everything, I felt like you might have gotten a little emotional. You start, you went back. Oh, I got a little emotional. Yeah. I did. Yeah. Because that's, that's what real wrestling fans are. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. uh, I, I get to work with the ultimate fan, Dave LaGreca, mm-hmm. every week. I've seen Dave have to take a minute to, to okay, there's there's people around. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> I'm all right. 
<laughs> you know, do that. Just talking about wrestling. Do that big man shit. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, no, no, I'm, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Uh, don't bother me. <laughs> like he is ate up. Yeah. And that's why I love him. Yeah, because it's real. Yeah, it's real. But on that note, that's a very different skill set, a very different brain than being able to point out people. Like, it's one thing to go to an indie show and see the guy with the best match and go, man, that guy should be in WWE. Yeah, he can work, yeah. But to to be able to watch America's Got Talent, to be able to go to strongman events, to be able to go to other sports. To watch somebody on television. Right. I watched Bianca on on a, a YouTube uh, wrestling, I mean, uh, strongman thing for Rogue Fitness. Mm-hmm. And she had on a big, giant, fluffy bow and a tutu. Mm-hmm. She was wasting energy mm-hmm. because she would do her lift. And then while waiting to the next lift, she would do a cartwheel and she would dance. I do it. Like she was just, she was just so damn entertaining. I couldn't yes. take my eyes off her. Yes, I didn't know nobody else was in that room. I'm like, this girl is nuts. She's wasting energy. She needs to save that for the next event. But she couldn't help it. I I, I called it. I uh, sent her a message on Instagram or Facebook or one of the whichever social media platform it was. And I said, how, how old are you? And she said, 18. I said, ooh. I said, hey, tell your dad to call me tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> I said, tell him to reach out to me. And, and he 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 um, he sent me a message, and I talked to him. And I was like, hey, man, your daughter got it. And he was like, I got a question. Yeah. Is this real Mark Henry? And I said, yes, sir, this, this is really Mark Henry. Mm-hmm. And he said, wow. He was a wrestling fan. That's why she was who she was. Yes, she was because raised she with it. she sat there and watched it with her dad. By the way, that's one of my favorite things now. Like, like to be able to meet and interact with pro wrestlers still to me is the greatest thing in the world. But I've also now gone one step further and met some of the parents oh, of yeah. these pro wrestlers who are the you, biggest pro. Have you met Miz dad? No, I Miz don't know that dad we've ever spent wild. any time together. I like him. John Cena's dad. Yes, John wild. Cena's dad. Yeah. But I mean, literally, I, and I, I told Bianca when we did, uh, when I did Bust It Open with Tommy Dreamer, that the night before we were in the hotel at the Royal Rumble and I was passing through and and somebody went, hey, Sam, Sam Roberts. And I was like, oh, hey, nice to meet you. And they look kind of familiar. And they're like, we're Bianca's parents. <laughs> <I was> like, <laughs> oh, it's awesome. <laughs> Just awesome. Because they know wrestling. They love wrestling. They yeah. know who you were. So at what point did you develop that brain where you're like, oh, okay, I, I, I see this whole picture and I'm so keyed in that I can spot this anywhere. I can spot wrestling anywhere. It was, it was after uh, Brian Danielson. When you realize, okay, well, if if I was so right about Danielson, but it wasn't just the fact that that I I, I felt like I was right. Mm-hmm. It was people coming up to me going, "Why why did you pick him?" Because mm-hmm. they wanted to know. Mm-hmm. And I said, "Man, I watched him work, and I believed that he was going to kill the guy he was wrestling with, and when the guy that he wrestled against." Um, touched him it looked like he was dying and at least two or three times i went oh damn it's over like i was mad and dejected that the match was finna end Mm -hmm. they got me he 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 worked me at that at that stage and i went oh oh oh, we got some more yeah I think you're about to break that TV behind you. You really are the world's strongest man. Get in there, hot dog. Know. That's the world's strongest man. That's never happened. Let me before. not lean against the wall. <laughs> just take it off. Just take it off. You can take it off. Whatever you gotta do. Whatever you gotta do. This is the great that's never 
connected before. to it? Something else? Oh, yeah. Hold on. He's got this. I got it. I got it. He's got this. This needs another hand. No. <laughs> <laughs> Hot dog. Good job, hot dog. He is wor- did Give you your hand. you saw it going, right? I did. I you saw it going. I was like, and then part of me, and maybe this goes back to wrestling, part of me is it's just watching. I you. just want to see what's gonna happen. If that thing smashes behind him, it'll be the greatest thing that's ever happened in this studio. Oh man. <laughs> but but that Brian got me twice yeah. in that match that I saw him in Canada mm-hmm. when he was with ROH. And he looked you know how people's presence can make them look bigger? Mm-hmm. Of course. I had no idea that he was 5'9", five, 5'10". Five, yeah. He looked like he was six feet tall, at least 6'1". I knew there was something something different about him beyond just me being a wrestling fan. Because sometimes when you're a wrestling fan, you just get blinded by, I love wrestling, I love good wrestling. Yeah, he's the best. When I went to a Ring of Honor show at the Hammerstein Ballroom, and I want to say it was him and maybe Nigel McGuinness. It was somebody with him, with Brian Danielson. And I watched the match. I'm geeking out because I'm a wrestling fan. And I was there with my wife, who's not a wrestling fan. She just appreciates it through my lens. And after the thing, she goes, that was a great match. She's never said that before. Mm-hmm. She doesn't care about matches. She's not a wrestling fan. She might like an entrance. She might like an outfit. She might like a promo. She might get her feelings hurt. But she's not sitting there going, rating matches. Right. And when she said, wow, that was a great match. That was entertaining. That's the difference. That's the difference. Yeah. And that's what I look for in a person. Mm -hmm. And then you can teach them to wrestle. Right. There have been some people that I talked to that were awesome, but they just didn't love wrestling. Mm. And when they didn't, I was just like, oh, no. You Come could... on. you Just watch it for a week. Yeah. And then just see if it if it does something to you. Nothing. There's, there's, I've had some misses, but they were never was. Right. Because they, they didn't watch it, and they never really tried. Right. Right. And that, that's, that's, I think about that sometimes, too, the ones I, I missed out on. Mm-hmm. But, you know, you can't think about what was. Mm-mm. No, it's not going to get you anywhere. Now, speaking of you uh, molding the future, I was watching I was watching this press conference. I see The Rock talking about the Samoan dynasty and the family. And it's just, a, I mean, just a great, great segment of television. Just a great story being told in this way. But then I think about dynasties. And I realized that right under our noses, I think there is a Mark Henry dynasty that you're trying to build. At my house. At your home. And Jacob is going to be great. I mean, I don't know if, and I think luckily a lot I'm not of, saying that just because he's my son. I don't think you would. But I challenge anybody in pro wrestling, Triple mm-hmm. H himself, Tony oh Khan himself. Oh, my God. Go and have a conversation with him. That's what I was going to point out. And 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 think, oh, he'll be okay. Or is he going to be great? Because he loved wrestling more than water. Like, it's, it's like if I said, Jacob, you don't have to go to college. You can go wrestle. Uh-huh. Thank you, Dad. <laughs> Dad, thank you so much. He, he'll break down crying. Uh-huh. And when you say wrestling, do you mean professional wrestling, amateur professional. wrestling, prof- professional wrestling? He would he would be tomorrow. He would drop out of school and he would become a pro wrestler. But you want him to go through college? He's got to go to college. Yeah, yeah. And he's going because to college. I just I he declared I want his... him when he's done mm-hmm. to be a CEO. So you want him to have that wrestling career and then develop into a he CEO. really he really wants to be Mike Mansuri. He really wants to be Kevin Dunn. Sure. He wants to run. He like we we talk about ten and two framing. We talk about stuff that kids don't talk about in wrestling. That's awesome. Jacob knows more about wrestling than most of the people at NXT. I guarantee you. I mean, and that but that has to be do at it's least talk. in part to, yeah to the lo- the conversations yeah. with you. It's talk. Yeah, and he wants to talk wrestling when people don't want to talk wrestling. <laughs> and I'm like, you're gonna have your turn. Mm-hmm. And you know, we went to Atlanta 
during the summer, and he was there for football training. Mm-hmm. But we went by and uh, to QT Marshall's school mm-hmm. and Cody's school, and he was the only one in the class asking questions. They got 12, 15, all, all of the people that you see at AEW, like the the young people, you know. Mm-hmm. Jacob was in a class with them because he was like, can, can I can I go sit in? I was like, yeah, Jacob, go ahead. And he's, <laughs> and I went, oh, shit. <laughs> Please don't say something stupid. And he asked a valid question, oh. and QT answered it. And then they wrestled around, and then QT showed a video. And Cody said, do y'all see why this is happening in this? And Jacob went, yeah, because he did. And Jacob started explaining he's teaching the class now. Because <laughs> he's got it. Because he knows wrestling. Yeah. And he wants to be a collegiate champion so he could be Gable Stevenson, but mm. Jacob. That's what of Jacob. Course. That's the way he said. He said, "I, I want to be like him, but, but, but more like me." And I'm like, "Boy, you have a really inflated idea of yourself." <laughs> <laughs> and he's basically your fault. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, but you raised him in a way. It seems like where he'll it's be like, respectful. Right. You're capable of anything, but you're gonna have to work for it. And you've got to respect people. And even when you can smash their faces in, you better not. And I'm mean, listen, man. I can go through my phone right now and show you him. He he's 31 and 0 right now. Wow. He haven't been scored on this year. Wow. Nobody has scored a point that he didn't give them. There are times where he'll put his hands on somebody back mm-hmm. and just let them stand up and give them the point because mm-hmm. he knows he's going to take them down and get three. Two or three rather than getting the one. Sure. Why exert the energy on one when you can get two to three? Like, he's a chess player. Sure. So he goes and sits and talks to Brian Danielson. No. Oh. And people, like, I'm, I'm like, he knows who to talk to because, one, I tell him. Mm-hmm. But, two, he watched the matches. And he'll ask, so why why would you work the arm the way like this rather than, uh, you know, more in a top wrist lock? He already knows. He knows wrestling. Wow. And it's the right questions. I want him to spend time in Japan. I told him, I said, man, you you limiting yourself. You just want to go to NXT and in two or three years be a WWE wrestler. Like, they may not even be ready for you mm-hmm. in three years. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. Like. So at least go and travel the world and learn how to be a man on your own. And you're going to be fine. And you uh, you guys announced where he was going to school. And I saw it too. You tweeted up a storm that day. You made sure the world knew. I wanted the world to know. Yeah. Because like it's important not for me to just say, hey, my kid is great. Mm-hmm. Because everybody thinks the kid is great. <laughs> I want everybody to be able to see it and judge him themselves. Uh-huh. And I tell him. Yeah. Hey. Who's that? Is that him? him? That's him. <laughs> Stop talking about me, Dad. Listen, uh, Dave LeGrec, I'm, I'm with my new friend. Is that Dave? I'm with my new friend, Sam Roberts. Um, you, you have anything you want to say to Sam? I love Sam. Congratulations, Sam. Oh, Thank you, Dave. I appreciate that. I'm, I'm like, I'm like, uh, I was thinking of you, and I was like, man, I can't believe this guy. Like, he just had, you know, a baby, and he's gonna do the show on Saturday. It's like, that's amazing. That Bro, to that. it's all his oh, wife. It, it's, it's like true. really has nothing to do with him. <laughs> that's no, a good point. I'm like, I can't believe that he's taking the time to do this. Like, he, you know, him and his wife just had a baby, and then I look up and he did an emergency podcast. <laughs> I was like. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll hit you later. Bye. Bye. See, you got a guest appearance from Dave LaGreca. I mean, this is a huge show. I'm on the number one radio show. You my competition, and I'm I'm up here giving you, I'm I'm giving you numbers, bro. Dave is gonna be mad after this one. Yeah, we're at each other's throats, clearly. <laughs> but I want to be number one. 
Yeah. Yeah. Like I, I, man, I have a thirst for success, Mm -hmm. but I don't have the ambition to be you and Dave Mm -hmm. because I have to pour some of that into my kids. Sure. So I split the time and I give them that. And I got to tell you, I'm glad you do. Because if you had the ambition to do what I do, I think I'd be shit out of luck. <laughs> well, I'd be in a lot of trouble. I, I, how, about, how about we just work out something where I just uh-huh. I just call in a couple of times a week That's with good. you and Dave, and you know I can stay home. That's good. That works for me. You've and, earned it. And then y'all both win. <laughs> You've earned it. <laughs> I'll take it. Well, Mark, you are the oh, best. Man. It is always good catching up with you, telling stories. Uh, is there any 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 particular direction you want to point people in or bust it open, of course, on Sirius man, XM? 24-7. 24-7. Seven days a week, man. Bro, I was started doing Bust It Open as a guest when it was just Dave and another dude at Sirius, even before Doug Morton. Before Mortman, Doug? Before Doug, I did that show. Wow. And it was, nobody was making any money. Nobody believed in it. They let Dave do it as a hobby. They put him on twice a week unless something got in the way. And, you know. You I know mean, who his first caller was at Sirius? Who? No. I was driving one night and I'm listening. And with him on satellite radio. Mm-hmm. And he said, Tomorrow is my first day at Sirius XM. He was like, So y'all can call this number, yada, yada, yada. And I almost had to pull over <laughs> and write it down. Mm-hmm. I said, I'm going to call him tomorrow. And I called. I was the first caller. That's wild. On the show that I'm now one of the hosts of. Look at the way things are. Everything has a way of Ain't working out. It's nuts. I love stories like that. Like, what's the odds, bro? I mean, who? Th- I, There's no odd. No. No. It's, that's like a lottery type deal. That's right. So I mean, I'm just very appreciative of getting to be around the people that love what I love the way that I do. Mm-hmm. And... Um, you know, I, it was it, it meant a lot to me that you, uh, you cared enough to about you know you started lifting weights, mm-hmm. and you reached out to me and said, "Hey man, can you help me with this?" Yeah, that that meant a lot to me. To you, I yeah. mean, to, I'm the one who 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 is is yeah, but you value by this. my opinion. I mean, come on. You, you're, you're, you know, world's strongest man is not like a, a gimmick. It's, it's not a moniker. It's not a moniker. You're so you yeah. put the work in, and you not only, I mean, you treat it like you do everything else. Not only did you put the work in and accomplish these things in that in that sport, but you also study it. You know what I mean? And you yeah. study the way people do it. So the fact that like, and I, I mean, we still. At the gym, and that was during the pandemic when I was doing the Not Sam Wrestling Show on the network, and we 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 filmed a bit for it and everything. We still at the gym. We go put another thirty on it. Yeah. <laughs> that's, 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 that's the Mark Henryism. Yeah, man. We ain't, we ain't putting no nickels and no dimes. Nope. We nope. going thirty. <laughs> it's awesome, man. It is so good. Thank you uh, for having me, man. To hang with you, I appreciate it absolutely. Come anytime. Say hi, Chucky. Chucky's here. Chucky's gonna say hi. There he is. There he is. Say hi, Chucky. Chucky's saying hi, and Chucky's saying goodbye. Hi, Sam. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mark Henry. <laughs> oh. <laughs>